right? Now, same scenario goes for your refrigerator. But before you do that, you have to make a list and make sure that you know exactly what you use constantly all day long. If you have kids, they're constantly in the refrigerator. You know, I mean, I'm sure there's parents out there like, close the refrigerator door. You know, I mean, so you want to get all those products out. You want to get the Kool-Aid out. You want to get the juices out. You want to get the cheese sticks out. You want to get whatever it is that your kid is always in the refrigerator for or your husband or you or whoever else. All right. So you want to make sure that that's all in a separate cooler with ice. Now you take what's remaining in there and you fill it all up with all the rest of the ice blocks. And this way here, it's going to buy you more time down the road. It's going to get you more time as long as you don't open those doors. The key here is you want to make sure that those doors stay closed as long as possible, folks, because then you're going to maximize the time that you need. What you have to do is you have to buy yourself two thermometers. You need one for the freezer, one for the refrigerator. If the refrigerator goes above 40 degrees and stays above 40 degrees for any longer than one hour, more than likely everything in the refrigerator with, without having you know a few said different products will have to go in the garbage. Your freezer needs to stay at zero. Okay, that's what they recommend. I wouldn't let it go any more than five degrees above five to 10 degrees above zero, you're really starting to push it because stuff will start to slowly thaw. And once you get to that point, you really have to make a decision. If you've been, or you're, you're already out 48, 72, you know, hours and everything else. And if the stuff is starting to go, you're going to want to start firing up some way to cook it. Your barbecue, maybe your neighbor's barbecue, maybe you're going to, maybe you're going to be feeding your neighbors, you know, but it's better than throwing it in the trash can. So, I mean, more than likely in this type of a scenario, it'd be, okay, you know, all the neighbors are going to be coming over. We're firing up the barbecue. We're going to start cooking all this food before it goes bad. At least we start feeding people. And then hopefully maybe somebody has some way to help maybe keep some of this stuff cool so that you can preserve it for maybe another meal and this type of stuff. So you really have to monitor that whole type of situation. You got to make sure that you are keeping without opening the door. Now, what you can do is you put those in there. If you're not going to open the door, then don't worry about it. Just leave them in there. When you open the door, that's when you check the temperature. All right. So don't open the door every five or six hours and try to check the temperature. That's not going to help your situation. You're just going to lose all that cold air. Just leave it in there. What I'm saying is when you access it, check the temperature. Plain and simple. All right. That's where a lot of your dried goods, your canned goods, and all that different type of stuff is all going to come into play because it can keep that closed. You can store your milk and your butter and all this other kind of stuff if you want right in your cooler and, you know, keep that going. And, you know, that can stay. You have all your dry goods. You have everything else you need, your rice, your beans, your canned goods, canned vegetables, canned chilies, canned meats. And the list goes on and on. I've done extensive videos on just about everything that we've talked about today. And now I really want to make sure that people understand why this is, in a sense, like we're going to battle, folks. The reason we want to do all this is we want to succeed at what we are doing. We want to win the war. We want to survive and thrive. And the only way to do that is to be prepared. There's no other way. Nobody's going to do it for you. These have just been some really in, inexpensive. The, I think the most expensive thing I have is this right here. And that cost me 250 bucks. My rock piles, 300 watt generator. But rather than that, everything else is, is relatively cheap under, you know, I'd say under hundred bucks. You know, I mean, a lot of things you can get for even less if you're a thrifty shopper. So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. I'd like to thank you for joining me today on this video. I hope this gives people a lot of different ideas and a lot of different things that you can do to be prepared to go to battle when these storms roll in, to succeed at winning at the battle, to have the plan in place, to know how you're going to win the battle so that you come out on top. It's called Thrive to Survive.